Namaste. So let's continue with Adi Shankaracharya's Sri Aparokshanabhuti. We just went through a long section about ignorance. So now he's going to start talking about the truth and what it means to be self-realized. So there are five verses in this section. Let's jump in and take a look. I am verily Brahman, being equanimous, peaceful, and absolute existence, knowledge, and bliss by nature. I am not the body which is non-existence itself. This is called realized knowledge by the wise. I am without any change, without any form, free from all blemish and decay. I am not the body which is non-existence itself. This is called realized knowledge by the wise. I am not subject to any disease. I am beyond all comprehension, free from change and alteration, and all-pervading. I am not the body, which is non-existence itself. This is called realized knowledge by the wise. I am without any attribute or activity. I am eternal, ever liberated and imperishable. I am not the body, which is non-existence itself. This is called realized knowledge by the wise. I am free from all impurity. I am immovable, unlimited, holy, undecaying, and immortal. I am not the body which is non-existence itself. This is called realized knowledge by the wise. So we've gone deeply into the nature of ignorance in the last few verses, which is based on the identification with the body. Now, in these five verses, we look at the opposite, the result of realized knowledge, which is really summed up in the statement, I am not the body, which is non-existence itself. Well, you might ask, how is the body non-existent? Uh, that's what people in conditioned consciousness usually do. <laughs> They think they are the body. They think the body is real and the world is real. So how is it possible then that the body is non-existent? Well, even from the platform of duality, think about the history of the world, the history of the universe, the past. This universe has existed for many billions of years before this body came into existence, apparent existence. <laughs> and after this body is finished in a hundred years or so or less, how many more millions and billions of years will pass in which this body is not seen? So the actual existence of the body, even from the dualistic perspective, is just a tiny slice of time in the midst of a vast past and future. So really, it could be said to be non-existent. You know, just the way a spark that uh, comes out of the fire lasts for just a second. You see the flames of the fire, roaring fire, huh? and there are many little sparks. Some of them go up with the flames, some of them come out to the side, but all of them are quickly extinguished. So in the same way, the existence of this body is just a flash, really, in the eternal purview of time. It's nothing. So it may as well be non-existent for all practical purposes. 
And it's non-existent in another way also. The body is an aggregate. It's not one thing. It's a combination of many different parts and circumstances that bring it into being, maintain it, and finally lead to its destruction. It is said that death is born along with your birth. In other words, the body is created with a certain span of life. And this is unchangeable. One's karma, which is the result of activities in a previous life or previous lives, cannot be changed. Karma is inviolable. It's fate, destiny. Huh? So the only thing that we can change is our attitude towards it. And if we realize the self, then none of this karma is applicable anymore. Neither the results of the past karma that are kind of in storage, waiting for the right circumstances, nor the prarabdha karma, the karma that applies to this life, nor the, uh, well, the sanchari is the total of stored karma, but then there's also the kriyamana karma, which is the karma created in this life by our reaction to the things that happen according to karma. Because when karma happens that we like, we cling to it and we say, oh, I want this to go on forever. This is great. And when karma happens that we don't like, we say, oh, I, I, I resist this. I don't want this. I want it to go away. And so the clinging and resistance to the different types of karma, and even if the karma like is neither pleasant nor unpleasant, and it just doesn't matter to us, these all go to make the karma for the next lives. Kriyamana karma. So in this way, the wheel of karma, the wheel of birth and death, is going on and on and on indefinitely. This karma, this illusion, this conditioning, is said to be without beginning and without end. Maya is beginningless and inexplicable. Why is that? Because if we analyze philosophically, even the existence of Maya is an illusion in Brahman. Brahman remains without change, without qualities, without activities, without disease, even without consciousness. Consciousness can only arise when there is an object. And there is no object in Brahman because Brahman is one. It's a unity. It is not divided into subject and object. So Brahman is that which, when realized, leads to the end of suffering immediately. Because the basis of our suffering is our identification with the body as the previous verses discuss. One is like a, a, a mudha, an ass, a donkey. Why is this particular um, simile used? Well, if you've ever had any dealings with a donkey, you know that not only are they dumb, but they're extremely stubborn. So in the same way, and oh, oh, my Adi Guru used to use this story that the male ass goes to the female for sex. And because, you know, females are just as stubborn as the males, he gets kicked in the balls. <laughs> but still, he keeps trying again and again. See, this is, this is 
determined stupidity. <laughs> and aren't we the same? Even after being kicked so many times by Maya, by our karma, we still keep trying for things, even if we're unqualified for them. Thinking that, oh, if I just make more effort, if I just try harder or longer, I'll get the result that I want. But that's not so. The truth is, we'll get the result that we deserve by our karma. So there's no use either clinging to or resisting the results of our activities. They're already carved in stone. What we can do is we can change our attitude towards them and say, oh, this karma, this enjoyment and suffering is part of the body. And the body is not myself. It's not me. It's not who I am. It's not even really mine. We say all these things just out of convenience. My body, this, I am going here, I am doing that. Huh? And because of language, we eventually start to believe all these things. Oh yeah, the body really is me, or it really is mine. And I'm really going here and doing that. See, but all of this is not true. It's illusory. Try to understand. The whole material creation is one seamless whole that's created at the time of the universal manifestation. And even though it apparently contains thousands and millions of demigods and other heavenly creatures, and then millions and millions of species of different animals and plants and so on, and many, many different stars and worlds and, you know, all that stuff. There is no cause and effect. Confirmed. <laughs> it's all planned out in advance and created by Maya as an appearance in Brahman. It's not real for the same reason that the body is not real. This universal manifestation, as grand and complex and uh, intelligently designed and awesome, Huh? sometimes beautiful, sometimes horrible, but always awesome, as amazing as it may be, it's still only one universal creation in an endless string of universes that are created and destroyed, created and destroyed, created and destroyed eternally. So the cause of all this is Brahman. Brahman is real, but all this other stuff is unreal because it only is impermanent. So it may have some relative reality from a certain viewpoint of consciousness and duality, Dvaitavada. But from the viewpoint of Ajatavada, perfect self-realization, it doesn't even exist. Here we go with the example of the rope and the snake. The rope is real. The snake is not real. The snake exists, but only as a perception only as a mistake, only as an illusion, a wrong idea. See, the snake doesn't exist like the rope exists. It has a different sort of existence. And as soon as we examine, as soon as we inquire into the actual situation, we see, oh, it's not a snake, it's a rope. 
So in the same way, the material world, the material body, qualities, activities, and so on in the material world are like the snake. They're real, but they're a real perception only. They're a real illusion, a real mirage, a real mistake, a real error. And if we inquire with Atma Vichara into who am I, what am I, what is this world, what is this nature, what is time, what is space, etc., we find that ultimately none of it exists and that Brahman is the only reality. And the Upanishads say again and again, this Brahman is to be heard about. This Brahman is to be examined, meditated on, realized and seen for what it is. And this is the end of all suffering and illusion. This is the goal of all self-realization. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.